The caution flag slows the field as the bent and battered remains of Yarbrough's car, Marcus's car, and others limp back to the garage. The die guard crew swarms over Waltrip's machine, applying duct tape to bent metal as though it were band-aids for bruised knees. Daryl's wife, Stevie, maintains her pit road perch where she records her husband's lap times throughout the race. For you, Stevie, when you're sitting in the pit area, seeing him do 200 miles per hour, what does it do to you? It, it bothers me more on a super speedway. The racetracks, although I found that um, this year and last year in particular, maybe it's because he has been more competitive. Um, I don't know, I just have a certain amount of calmness that I didn't have when he first started out. She uh, sort of understood, or she's very understanding about racing. She knows it's, it's all I know, it's what I want to do, it's what I do best, and therefore, uh, if we're going to eat regularly, well, she has to sort of support me. <laughs> <laughs> Stevie, how important was faith? <laughs> well, I think faith played a big part, you know, not only in faith in yourself, faith in myself, faith in Daryl, but uh, faith in God, um, that whatever happened was meant to happen. So far, things that have happened have, have basically been real good. Faith for you? Well, I think it, uh, from the day I was six years old, when I was six years old and I said, I want to be a race car driver. I uh, I could I dreamed about it, and uh, I felt like that even in the good even in the worst times, and there were times in late model sportsman and uh, times throughout my career that I thought, well, I'm going to give this up and learn how to do something else. But again, faith in myself, confidence in myself, and a trust in the, the good Lord, I guess, as much as anything. He, you know, he sort of put me in this business. I'm sure he gave me the talent to do what I'm doing. And I think it was that faith that made me continue on because I knew I was doing the right thing. Strikes me that for the both of you, it's a team effort, that you both work awfully hard to involve each other in your particular career, Daryl. Well, first of all, uh, you know, this can be a very uh, uh, traumatic, I guess is the word, occupation you have the you have the, uh, the thrill of winning and of course all the grief of losing and a lot of times uh, whether you win or lose is a lot uh, has a lot to do with how my me as a driver and as a leader of my team uh, it has a lot to do with how I, I get every how well I am prepared whether it be physically mentally or as far as the race car is concerned. So if I go home after a race and I didn't win or we had a really bad day, uh, you know, I guess I, I feel like I got the weight of the world on my shoulders. Boy, I really blew it today, you know. And it's lonesome. It's a real lonely feeling. And uh, to have this redhead to pat me on the back and tell me that, you know, there'll be another day. Uh, you can, you'll make it up next week. And that is comforting uh, to know that when we get in the car and we start out on the racetrack that everybody else may be mad at me, but she is not anyway. Allison's sweet victory is heartbreaking disappointment for runner-up Waltrip. But Stevie Waltrip puts the day in its proper perspective. We usually talk after a race, whether it's been a good day or a bad day. We talk about everything that went on. And uh, if it was a particularly traumatic experience and we talk about it you know a whole lot more <laughs> but then we kind of leave it behind us we just look towards the next week and and, and forget it